What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I break down the new Halo Infinite Winter Update and discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. Does this give Halo fans hopium for the future? Should we expect an increase in the game's population? And is this update enough to be considered good? I answer all these questions and more, so please stick around to the end. This is Marsman Gaming. In this 12 minute update, 3 for 3 Industries gave us a pretty solid overview of what to expect this coming November. It showed us some key features as well as some adjustments that they were going to make for the new update. But for every update and season expansion, I'm always trying to be as analytical as possible and discuss the good and the bad while also trying to be realistic on what should we expect from the future. So let's start off with the good. The Forge is the biggest positive in my opinion. In the update, you see various types of maps and modes that were developed by 343's Forge Council. And you can clearly see by the amount that they showed throughout the entirety of the update that they seem to be very excited with what they have to offer. I honestly think this is a great thing to see for Halo Infinite because one of the biggest issues I've had since the launch of the game and what I've been slamming the table on was the fact that Halo Infinite didn't have much content to play with. Based on the instructional videos I've seen from 343 as well as the many clips I've seen from the community, it seems as though 343 is trying to provide content which can be played by everybody. But the big concern I do have is whether or not these maps and modes will be dropped into the general population as soon as possible. I thought it was a pretty good sign from Tom French, one of the major developers from 343, where he came forward and said that he's trying to collect the best modes and maps from the community, which would be added to a sort of action sack playlist. I think this is a great move if 343 does this the right way, and that will at least give us some more content to play and really show off the best of the best from the community. This is a much needed thing, and I'm really glad to see that 343 is actually prioritizing it. I really hope that this can bring more content in the future. Next thing I wanna talk about is the co-op network campaign. Now, the fact is, I think everybody here wanted to see a split screen co-op come to Halo Infinite, and obviously it is kind of a bummer that we're now getting that officially, but the key thing is, this is still a pretty good update to have this coming November. The last time we played Network Co-op, me and the boys had a fantastic time playing this and re just reliving the campaign together. It kind of reminded me of how fun Halo really is when you play with others, whether it's friends or family. 343 also announced some key updates that were going to be added to the campaign as well. In addition to certain updates, 343 is also adding in achievements so that it brings more challenge to the story. They're also making some more adjustments to the mode, like fast traveling, group markers, and I honestly think these are all positives because at the end of the day, these were kind of nitpicking little details that I noticed when I was playing the network beta with my friends and family. One of the most interesting things talked about during the update video was that Joseph Seed had mentioned that they had enlarged the map so that it gives those playing the game more ability to navigate and play their own way. Now, granted, I want to see how much of this is true, but it seems as though they really emphasize that theme of playing the way you want to. And I think that is honestly the best thing to come away from this co-op campaign because people were nervous with the idea that you were limiting them to a certain extent of the map. And I honestly think if they do this the right way, then people are going to love playing co-op campaign again. By all means, overall, I think this is a great feature they're adding. The last part of this section, I do need to talk about the maps, modes, and the armors. What I really like to see was that we're actually getting content overall in this winter update. We're getting two new maps, which is Detachment and Argyle. We're getting multiple new game modes added to the population. We're getting 30 tiers of an extended battle pass that is free to earn. And these armors included those that were really fan favorites that were left out from season one and season two. And all of these are basically examples of how Halo Infinite is finally getting content. I said this already in the video, but the biggest issue that Halo Infinite had wasn't the gameplay mechanics, it wasn't the maps or art design, it was the lack of content. And now that we're finally getting those maps, modes, and armors, it's only going to be positive from here on out when it comes to getting more things in our hands. This update kind of shows that the rough start that Halo Infinite had is just that, it's a rough start. And from here on out, I can kind of see that they're trying to lay the groundwork for more positive things in the future. The only question is, when is the next time we can get more content added to this game? I would rather it be sooner than later, especially with the implementation of Forge, but we'll have to see from there. With the good, we also have to talk about the bad. With the fact that we're getting a good amount of content in this winter update, 
The only downside I can see here is that with six months, basically since season two, it's kind of unfortunate that we really haven't gotten more than what we have in this new update overview. Three for three up to this point was trying to hype up what was found in season one and season two of this game. But nothing compares to what we're getting in this year two of Halo Infinite. What it's telling me is that year two has more content than anything we got in the first year combined, which is kind of scary when you think about it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be mad that we're getting two brand new maps or modes in this new update, but it's kind of like, okay, so six months later, while we get our two maps, 30 tiers of a battle pass, a few game modes, it's good, but there should be more. Forge is the biggest winner here, but the reality is we really need to see how they implement ways in which Forge can really benefit the general population as well as adding new playlists and maps to the game. The fact is, people have been making Forge maps for weeks, so how is it this difficult to get Forge made maps right into the general population right now. The second issue I had was the fact that we are not getting a custom browser until season three. One of the best things coming in this update is Forge. And the fact that we can now make our own maps and share them with our friends is going to be a great thing. But here's the problem. You're not going to be able to share your maps or your created playlists with anybody in the Halo community, unless they are your friend on your friends list or have access to them direct. In my recent post on YouTube, I actually asked the community if they thought Forge would save Halo Infinite. And most people said that it depends on custom game browser. Basically what it means is that without custom game browser, you'll have to know the person directly in order to get access to that map. However, when file share does become a thing, it will become bigger. And a lot of people were just upset that in the, the November or winter update, we really didn't get any sort of information on whether it was going to drop then. All we do know is that it's going to drop in season three, which is going to be roughly around three or four months away. Even though Forge looks great, it's just unfortunate that we're not gonna get a custom game browser right here once Forge drops. And with the bad, we have to talk about the ugly. It's been nearly a year up until this point and we still have yet to have a real progression system. Every Halo game up to date, there was a system in place to measure your overall level, whether it was through military rank or numbers to show how much of a veteran you are in the game. This was discussed to be in the works in Halo Infinite, but clearly we haven't heard a single peep about it up until this point. So we have no clue whether it's going to drop at a certain date or whether it's going to drop at all. Something as simple as having just a number attached to your name like it does in Halo 5, or the best case scenario, having a military rank based on progression is honestly the best thing we can have right now. The fact that we can't even get to the Halo 5 level of progression is kind of sad. Along with the progression system, Halo Infinite really needs to revamp their challenge system as well. How is it possible we don't have a challenge system that measures career stats is kind of laughable. How difficult is it to make a challenge system based on the games that you made before, like Halo MCC? You ma literally made a system that was perfect, that collected the amount of overall stats you had in your career, as well as weekly challenges that help you progress in the, I guess you would say, battle tiers of Halo MCC. If you were to copy that system and place it into Halo Infinite, I think everybody would be elated to see that. And what's scary is, this is three for three that's made that system. They've done it one way on one game, then have it a completely different way on a different game. Why can't you just copy the best parts of your game and share it abroad? The hope is that in season three that this could possibly be implemented, but I'm not really gonna be banking on that because three for three has shown that they really haven't really cared too much about a progression system up until this point. And lastly, we need to talk about the lack of weapons, vehicles, and equipment for the November update. Almost a year into this game, we still have not seen a new weapon, vehicle, or equipment added. Not even new weapon variants. We should be getting either more variants to try in BTB Social, or at least two new guns to try in the general game. Simple weapons like the Spiker or the DMR should have been implemented in this game at this point. We do know that the DMR and the Shroud Screen will be added into Season 3, but it's kind of sad that up into a year already, and we still haven't gotten brand new weapons or vehicles. How is it possible that I can see a leaked version of the Falcon and the Bandit, but we still have yet to even have it in this November update. It's just disappointing because I know that Halo has such a wide array of sandbox that they could possibly use in this game. And with all the weapons and vehicles that they have in past titles, you can make the gameplay of this game even better by implementing some older weapons, vehicles, and equipment from Halo 3 and just bring it right into Halo Infinite. Overall, I think this update has some good and bad. I think the fact that we're getting this update on time is already a positive to me. Because up until this point, 3 for 3 has kind of told us one thing and then done something completely different. So when they actually tell us that we're gonna be dropping the November update on this particular date, 
and they actually follow through with it, that is a good thing to see so far. We've all seen what Forge is capable of, and almost every Halo fan I've talked to was elated about the possibilities of what can come about this new mode. Me personally, I'm excited to try it out myself. Even though I've never been a major Forger, I've already come up with some designs for some wild maps and game modes that I can't wait to stream them live for everybody. Network Co-op is finally arriving, and I am just happy to see that this mode is dropping again because I can finally play it with my friends and family. This game mode showed that Halo is supposed to be played with more than just one person. When playing the beta, I was just happy that I can play the campaign with others and just enjoy it like we did in back in the good old days. Finally getting content in Halo Infinite is a great feeling, and I'm just excited to see how much content we will end up getting in year two, especially if this is going to be the first real taste that we have of what 343 has planned. However, at the same time, you have to realize that almost a year has passed and we still have struggles with dropping content in Halo Infinite. Sure, I'm not going to complain with the content that they're dropping, but at the same time, this is really not that much. This is not groundbreaking. Forge releasing is great, but with no custom browser, it kind of diminishes the impact that Forge has right away. With all this hope, we still don't have the basic things like a real progression system or a revamped challenge system because 3 for 3 has really announced anything in the future. Overall, I'm excited about this update. I can finally see the horizons and notice that Halo Infinite is going to basically become a better game in the future. I think it's a good sign to finally get major features that should have been in the game way earlier. If you look around the Halo fan base, you will see a lot of fans as well as content creators that shed negatively towards Halo Infinite, especially before this update. But if you look around more recently, you'll notice that there has been a lot more positivity going around this game and this franchise. Because of the fact that we've seen some content drops as well as a lot of leaked footage, people started to realize that Halo Infinite is not as bad as what everyone made it sound it to be. This should give fans more hope for the future, and I do believe that there will be a population bump. I think we'll get back to 20 million players? Probably not. But to be honest, how many games have ever dropped to 20 million and returned back to that number a year later? I think if this update lands with Forge, Network Co-op, the content dropping, and there's no bugs whatsoever, I think this will be an overall good update to Halo Infinite. Remember where we started and look where we are now. Halo Infinite started with the bare minimum amount of content to be played with a lot of people jumping into the game and loving the gameplay. But obviously as the year goes on, people have to recognize that this is going to be better off now than we have been since day one. I said this before, look at how much content we had in both season one and season two and compare that to the winter update. We probably have more content here and this smaller update will only be three months long and compared to what we had with season one and season two combined. The only question left is where we go from here and can this game be saved? Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so yet, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. If you want to join us on social media, please do that on our Twitter and Discord and as located in the description below. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by dropping a donation or joining us on Patreon and that is also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace.